<clears throat> okay, okay, guys, I think we can start now. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Let's start. So as you know, uh, the midterm is going to be our test one, actually, to be more accurate, because we're going to have two tests in this course. So test one is going to be on Thursday during the lab session. Uh, and actually, the test will be close to the quizzes. So I'm not going to ask you to write a big program in this test. I'm going to do it later in this course, but not in this test. So in this test, it, I just want to test you in the instructions and your understanding to the course in general. So it's gonna be like short questions, similar to the quizzes. It's not gonna, I'm not gonna, it's not like labs. I'm gonna ask you to write a big program. I will do that in the future. So now, uh, hopefully today, I'm, 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 I am about, I'm about to finish chapter two, and then we're gonna start from uh, chapter three. As I told you before, this course is gonna, is gonna start, it, it will be like more interesting uh, after chapter two. Okay, because after chapter two, I'm gonna teach, uh, uh, as, I, as I told you in the last lab, you, 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 uh, you can't use the simulator anymore from, from the coming lab. For sure, we don't have a lab this uh, Thursday, but after the break, uh, we're gonna, the first lab after the break, you, can, you can't use the simulation anymore. You have to use the uh, board because we are gonna start using input output devices here, okay? So uh, last time I started, to, I explained a stack. And I told you stack is actually a part of the memory that we are using it uh, like uh, last in, first out. Last in, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, last in, uh, uh, last in, first output, uh, storage memory, okay? And I told you uh, the way, the way you are gonna re read or write is gonna be different from what we did before. Before, we used to memory before, right? So in this course, we used to memory. But the way we used to memory, it was something like that. Load A, location 10, store A, uh, store, uh, store A in location 7,000 7, or whatever. So what we did so far, it was like random access. You can read any location, you can write to any location. Stack is a completely different idea. In stack, as I told you, we're gonna, the stack should grow from here, from 4,000, it's gonna grow up this way. Uh, and I told you in stack, I'm not going to use the word read or write because usually we use the word push. If you want to write, we call it push to the stack. If you want to read, we call it you, you pull, pull from the stack. Okay. And I told you, we, we, in order to implement the stack, we need like, uh, we, make a, we need to, uh, a special register. We call it stack pointer. So the stack pointer should point, should point at the top of the stack, the top of the stack. Okay. So that at any time, if you want to write, you have to write at the top. If you want to read, you have to read at the top. So you have to, you are going to write or read uh, from a certain point or in, from a certain location. This location is pointed by the stack point. So anyway, I explained to all of that. Also, last time I explained what push instructions we have, what pull instruction we have. Okay. Also, I explained before how can we use the stack. Okay. I told you if you want to. If you want to use the register X for something, is that okay? But register X is storing a pointer, an, an address. So all what you have to do, you have to store it somewhere, right? And then you can use the register X and then when you need it, you can get it back, okay? And somewhere, what do you mean by somewhere now? I mean a stack. You can push it to the stack, okay? To store this value in a stack and then use it and then pull it from the stack, okay? So usually we are going to do something like that. Also, I told you uh, in... in uh, when you have like functions, when you have when you have like uh, functions, something like that, uh, I'm gonna use also push and pull this way. So inside inside this function, I'm gonna use register A and register X. Is that okay, guys? However, I have to keep the original value. So I'm gonna push A, push X, as you see here, and then I'm gonna pull X, pull A. Okay. So here I'm gonna save the original value, and then I'm gonna use A and X, and then I'm gonna get the original value back. Why you did that? I did that so that, so that when you call a function, uh, the values of the register before or after should be the same, okay? Unless, unless, 
one register, the return value is going to be in this register. You get what I'm saying? Don't, don't just, just automatically push everything, pull everything. That's not true, right? Why? If, I, if I'm going to return a value in register A, if you push and pull, you are not going to return the value. So you are going to return the original value for A. So you have, you, have to do, you have to do the idea of push and pull. All the time, you are going to do it in function. In functions, we are going to do in the beginning. We are going to any, any register you are going to use in the function, you are going to push it and pull it. However, the register is you are going to return. Okay, you should not push and pull it because I don't want I don't want to keep the original value. Okay, uh, and more importantly, as I told you, stacks are used to implement the subroutines. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna elaborate today about this one. Without a stack, we cannot have subroutines. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. So and then last time also I explained subroutines. How can you make subroutines? I told you in order to make subroutines, number one, you need to learn. How can you call a subroutine? And for calling a subroutine, we have two instruction, PSR, branch subroutine, and then you have to write the name of the subroutine, or you can say JSR, jump subroutine, and then you can write the name of the subroutine. This version is short, this version is long. So my advice to you, just all the time you can use just jump subroutine, that's it, just make it easy. So all the time you can just use this one. So using this instruction, this how can you call a subroutine? Is that okay? Don't be confused. In C language, in C language, you didn't you didn't need to use an instruction to call a subroutine, right? But it's not a C language. Here, here you have to use an instruction GSR to call a subroutine. Okay, jump subroutine. Also, how can you return from a subroutine? So this is somehow similar to the instruction return in C language. Remember, in C language, you have something we call it return. Okay, uh, so here, actually. At the very end of the subroutine, you have to write an instruction here called RTS. So this instruction, it does not need any of branches here. This is in here. So what happens, as you see here, guys, in this is a very simple example, I created a subroutine. It's called keypad, as you see here, OK? And then at the very end, I'm going to write RTS to return the subroutine. So what's going to happen, guys, once I come here, so this, this instruction, it's going to jump, jump to here, come to here execute the subroutine and then this one is going to bring me back to here okay so this instruction it, you, you are calling the function so what is going to happen here i'm going to come to here. execute it and this this instruction or this is going to bring me back, back to here. that's okay so again so very simple so now guys very simple if you want to call an instruction you have to use jsr if you want to return from a, a function or a subroutine, you have to go to RTS. I don't want to confuse you guys. What I'm saying, sometimes I will try to use only one term all the time, but but sometimes I it's I forget. But anyway, so anytime when I say function, I say routine or sub. I'm not our subroutine. I mean the same thing. All of them are the same thing. Okay. Um, now. This, this is how your program should be, guys. After, uh, after you, um, uh, with, with functions, this is how your program will be. This, this, this program, it, uh, your program will be very similar to C language. In C language, you have a function, you call it a main, right? A main function. Okay, I'm gonna call it main program. Okay, so we have here one part, I'm gonna call it the main function. And then you have a bunch of subroutines, number of subroutines. Every, every subroutine you have to end it with RTS, as you see here, okay, guys? One, one more very important thing, guys. Uh, he, again, this one is uh, the assembly is very basic programming language. Okay, it's different from the C language. Okay, in C language, when you say mean and you would brace it here this way, what's going to happen once you come here? So it, it can understand this is the end of the program. If you have a function here, if you have any function here, it's not going to continue this way, right? Because it's going to, this braces. This process means this is the end of the program, uh, okay? Or this is the end of the main, main function. However, this is not the case here. This is not the case, okay? So what's gonna happen is that if, if, you, if you put here some code, guys, I'm gonna come here and then it's gonna continue, okay? It's gonna continue for sure. For sure, I, this is mistake. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be this way. That's why from, from now on, uh, this, is, this is how we're gonna do the main function. Usually the main uh, or the main program. Usually the main program, we're gonna create like infinite loop, like this way, so that every time I come here, I go back, okay? So infinite loop, 
okay? And then if you wanna call, yes, you can call and come back. Yes, you can do that, okay? But, but you have to put a limit here. It, should, it shouldn't go this, this way until you call, unless you call, that's a different story. You get what I'm saying? So we're gonna do something like that uh, uh, all the time, especially if you are like, that's what we're gonna do actually in the coming two lifts, especially if you have one program and you wanna keep doing it. So I'm doing a certain operation. I am mon monitoring a liquid liquid level and then I have to take action or whatever. So I have I have a certain test and I have to keep doing it. It's not only one time, I have to keep doing it. Okay. So at any time, at any time when when I breathe the button, you have to turn the buzzer on. So it's, it's, that's why I need infinite loop in this case. Anyway, you will understand it better in, in the coming chapter. Or if you want to do it only one time, if you want to do it only time, so you have you have to freeze it here. So you have you have to create branch, branch here. So it's gonna keep keep branching here. Okay. So that it shouldn't go go all the way here. Okay. Any question, guys? Is that clear? That's what we're gonna do uh, all the time. But actually, most of the time it's gonna be something like that. Because uh, when you have a program, you want to keep doing it. So for example, if you have a security system, the security system, you're not gonna run it one time. You have to keep doing it, right? Uh, as as we, will, we will do in chapter three. Okay. Now, in this interesting slide, okay, I'm gonna tell you, so I just explained it here. I told you guys, once I come to this instruction, this instruction has, has to branch it to here. Once I come to here, this one has to bring me back to here. But I didn't, I didn't give you details. I didn't tell you how, how this is gonna work. How, how RTS is gonna, it's gonna know which location it has to go back. I didn't explain that. I didn't give you much details. Now I'm gonna give you details, okay? By the way, from what I explained to before, okay, let me, let me show, show, show you the details here. So here, I just wanna explain, explain to you how the call is gonna happen, how the return is gonna happen. Because here you will understand why we need a stack. Without a stack, we cannot make functions. You got what I'm saying? Because this stack is gonna help us right now. Okay, you will see how. Look here, guys. As I assume, we have an instruction like this one: jump addition. Okay, so you uh, jump a subroutine addition. So this one, you, you are calling the subroutine. This subroutine is called addition, as you see here. And this subroutine, I I end it with RTS. Okay, so you are calling a subroutine. Okay. As I told you before, assume, assume this instruction at location 4007, any number, but just to understand the concept, okay, to understand the idea. So assuming this one at 4007, okay? Assume next instruction, next instruction at location 4009, is that okay? As I told you before, guys, when we execute this instruction, when we execute any instruction, PC is pointing at next instruction. So when we execute this instruction, actually PC is here. PC is equal 4009. That's what we did before, right? At any time after you read one instruction and you increment PC so that when you when you when you execute an instruction, PC is pointed in the next instruction all the time. Is that okay? Look here, guys. So now, so as I told you before, here when I call this function, I have to go here. And then I have to come back to here, to this location. How, how this works, how it happens, I'm gonna tell you how, look here guys. Actually, this instruction, jump subroutine, it has to do two, two different things, two different things. Number one, it has to jump it to here. Like, like what? Like branch instruction. So this is similar to branch instruction, okay? How this is done, this is simply done, by storing in PC, I'm gonna store 5008, which is the beginning address here. Okay, so let me say it again. When we execute this instruction, guys, PC is here. PC is pointing, is pointing at Nick's instruction, okay? As I explained to you before, how can we do branch? Actually, the branch instruction is gonna put the location where you wanna go, the target location is gonna put it in PC. That's exactly what this instruction has to do. So this instruction, this instruction has to put the beginning address 5008 in PC. So that next time I come to here, next time I execute from 5008, five branch. So this is similar to branch, okay? However, I can't replace this one with branch. I can't replace this one with branch. Why? Because this one is gonna do something more. In addition to branch, it's gonna do something more. What this one has to do, this one guys, it has to store the return address. 
it has to store it somewhere. Why? Because RTS is gonna need it. Okay, RTS is gonna need it. So, the, so this instruction actually, guys, in order to execute this instruction, this instruction number one is gonna save, it's gonna store BC. And BC, BC is going to put the next instruction, right? So it's gonna store it somewhere. And we call it the return address. So this address here, guys, this one, BC is here. BC is pointing here. And this address, we call it the return address. This is where we have to return from the function. This is where we have to return. Anyway, so this, this instruction, guys, it has to store this PC somewhere. And now, what do you mean by somewhere? I mean stack. OK, so let me make it simple. So number one, this instruction here, guys, has to do two things. Number one, has to push PC to the stack, store it in the stack. I need to keep this value. Otherwise, if you don't store this value, if you don't keep it, I, I don't know where I have to return. You got what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep it from the stack so that this guy, RTS here, is going to take it from the stack. OK, anyway, you will see right now. So this instruction actually has to do two things. Number one, it has to push PC to the stack. This number one. Number two, it has to put the target address, okay, or the, the address of the function has to put it in PC in order to jump, in order to jump it to here. Is that okay? By the way, so this is this one here, this is similar to branch instruction, BRA. BRA is doing this one, but BRA is not doing this one. <laughs> That's why I cannot replace this one with, 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 with BRA, okay, branch. Any questions? Okay. So that is why, so once you come here, guys, very important to understand this point. Once I come to here, what should be at the top of the stack, the return address? That's why, let, let's read this. Always, always at the beginning of any subroutine, the top of the stack storing the return address. In any subroutine, in the very beginning, what is the store is the, in the stack is the top of the list. You didn't, you didn't push, you didn't, you didn't push, but who, who did the push? Jump in the You got what I'm saying? So, so if at the very beginning of any subroutine, if you look at the stack, you will find the return address is stored there. That okay? And then after you finish, after we finish, RTS, Artist is gonna pull, is gonna pull whatever is there, is gonna put it in BC. So that, so that we can come back to here, to the return address. You got the idea? Okay, this is how can we call, this is how can we return, okay? So this instruction is gonna store the return address, which is the PC, it's gonna store it in the stack, okay? We call it the return address, because this is where you have to return after you execute the function. And then RTS, RTS should take this, the top of the stack, put it in BC so that you can return it back. Any questions? You understand why always at the beginning of any subroutine, the top of the stack is storing the return address? Because this is how it's done by the call, by when you call. Also, for this, for, for this idea to work, when, when we come here, when we come to RTS here, the top of the stack, it should be also the return address because this one is gonna take whatever in the, uh, whatever at the top of the stack, put it in BC, okay? There is, there is a big issue here. What is the issue? I told you, in the very beginning of the subroutine, the stack is, to, is storing the, the return address, okay? And inside the subroutine, you can use the stack. The answer is yes, you can use the stack. However, however, you have to make sure when you come to RTS, the top of the stack is still 2009 or 4009, which is the return address here. How can you make sure of that? Very simple. This is assume this is assume this is this is the top of the stack. This is the return address. Is that okay? In the beginning of the subroutine, this is the return address. If you push 100 bytes, you should pull 100 bytes, right? So that when you go to RTS, the stack is storing the return address to return it back. What happens if you forget again? This machine they don't understand anything. 
It doesn't know this is a return address. It doesn't know machine just ones and zeros. Everything is just ones and zeros. You got them say. So if you push one hundred and you pull, for example, a ninety-eight, okay, our case is gonna take whatever here, put it in BC, and then it's gonna go to a random place in the in the memory. They don't understand, right? That's why it's it's your fault as a programmer, okay? So what? Uh, let me what I said now. I'm gonna say it again because this is a very serious issue, guys. What I'm saying. In the beginning of any subroutine, the return address is stored on the stack. Can I use a stack inside the subroutine? For sure, you can use it, but you have to use it in a correct way. What do you mean? Be use it in a correct way. I mean, the number of push or the amount of, of the amount of data you push, you have to make sure you are going to pull the same amount of data so that when you go to RTS, what's going to be on the stack is the return address to return it to the correct place. So if you push 100, you have to pull 100. If you forget, you are gonna, your program is going to crash 100% because you are going to go to a random place in the memory. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. So, anyway, so again, guys, what, what I'm explaining here, I'm explaining how a stack can help us to implement a subroutine. How? Very simple. The stack is going to restore the return address. Okay. So, when you, when you jump here, I should not, I have to see this number. This number is important. I have to store it. Why you have to store it? Because I need it later. When I return, I need it later. So, so what's gonna happen? I have to store it in the stack. Artist has to get it from the stack, okay? This is one issue. The other issue you should understand, always at the beginning of any subroutine, the, the top of the stack is storing the return address. Always, you have to make sure when you go to RTS, still the stack is storing the, the, the return address. That means if you push 100 byte, you should pull 100 byte. You got what I'm saying? Any questions? Okay. One more. Any question here, guys? You understand how, how everything working here? PC, how can you use the stack to, to store the return address? How, uh, what mistake you can make to make your program crash? The mistake, if you push more than what you pull or you pull more than you push, okay, they are not the same, okay? So when you go to RTS, the stack does not store, it's not storing the return at the somewhere random place in the memory, okay? You're not gonna get an error. You're not gonna get an error from uh, Code Warrior. Code Warrior is not gonna give you error. This is a logical error, you got what I'm saying? So, now I wanna, I wanna explain what is the logic behind, what is the rationale behind Last in first output. It looks very weird. Why? Why I want to store the data? Last in first output. In what scenario? In what, how I can meet something like that, like that? Last in first output. That's what I'm going to explain right now. Okay. This you will understand. This is the main reason why 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 they created stack because without the stack we cannot we cannot pull function this way. You would see how it works. Look here, guys. Here, this is the main program as you see here. Okay. We have a function, I'm gonna call it F1, okay? So when you call F1, so the return address, I'm gonna call it RE1, I'm gonna store it in the stack, right? And then once I come to F1, assume function F1 is gonna call, is, is calling another function, I'm gonna call it F2. So this instruction is gonna store the return address also in the stack, right? So, and then F2 will do the same thing. I'm gonna call another one, I'm gonna call it F3. So this is the stack. You can see now the stack. This is this is the stack after the after first call. The stack after the second call is going to be this way, and then the stack after the after the third call the stack is here. After the fifth call the stack is here. You call it again here. So the stack is here. Okay, guys. Now let's look at this point. When I return, if I want to, when I when I return, which one I need first? So last address you push. This is the one I need first. You got what I'm saying? Yeah, that is why it's last in first output. So last, the last one I pushed, which is this one here. Okay, so this is the first one I need here to return it back. So when I return it back, I'm gonna take this one. Okay, and then in order to return from here to here, I'm gonna take this one. In order to return it from here to here, I'm gonna take this one. Then I'm gonna take this one. If you look at this scenario, guys, you will see here. I'm gonna push, push, push. But when I when I take back, when I pull, I last one first because because I have 
I have to return from F4 to F3 first, and then from F3 to F2, and then from F2, F1, and then from F1 to the main program, right? That's why in or for, for this scenario to work, I need a storage. I need a data structure or a storage unit. This storage unit should be last in first object, okay? Because the last one I'm gonna push is the first one I need. So the last one here, I'm gonna push this address or uh, return address four. This is the last one I push. This is the first one I need when, when RT is pull. So when this RT is pull, so I need the last one here. When this one pull, I need I need a RE3. Okay, when this one, when, when this one pull from the stack, I need RE2 and so on. Any question, guys? Great. One more thing I told you uh, last time. Um, uh, uh, in any subroutine, sometimes I need to send the data, send the argument or parameter or data, whatever you want to call it. And sometimes I want to return data, return. It, or sometimes you don't need to send anything. You don't need to return anything. Anything, it depends on what you want to do for sure, okay? So uh, here I told you, in order to make it very simple, if you want to push something, uh, sorry, if you want to base some data, I can use the registers, as you will see right now, okay? I'm going to, so for example, uh, let me see, uh, also if you want to return something, it is going to be in the registers, okay? For example, I want to, here, I'm, uh, I, I'm going to make a function, as you see here, guys, this is a function. This is the name of the function, addition, whatever the name is, okay? This function, is expecting two number, one number in register A and one number in register B. Is that okay? And this and this one should return the submission, the submission in register A. So the return value should be in A. Okay, guys. So now I want to make a function. This function uh, should receive two numbers, one number in A, one number in B, and the return address should should store it in in uh, in A. Okay. Look here, guys. This is different somehow from what you did in C language. Why it's different? Because the registers like like global like global variables. Okay, that means if you modify here register X, register X will be modified here. If you modify here register Y, register Y, because we don't have two registers, right? Physically, X X is a is a is a physical right or a hardware. Okay, so I have only one X. If you modify it in any function, it's going to be modified. In, in, in all the other functions, okay? Uh, so let's see how, how, how we call this function, okay? Or uh, So what I did here in this function, guys, as you see here, this is the name of the function. This function, you should have two number, one in A, one in B, as you see here. And then I'm gonna add them, I'm gonna store the result in A, as you see here, that's it. This very simple function. And then I'm gonna say RTS, okay? How, I, how can I call this function? In order to call this function, I'm going to say jump, jump addition. No, but with a second, before you call the function, this function is expecting data in register A and register B. So you, ha you have to put data in A and B before you call the function. That's true. So here, guys, because I know this function, I have to base uh, two numbers, one in A and one in B. So before you call this function, I have to put a number in A, I have to put a number in B. Right, because this function is expecting uh, two numbers, one in A and one in B. So you have to put them first before you call the function. After that, you call the function. After I call the function, now after this function, I know the submission is origin A, so I can just use it here. Use A, uh, the submission is origin A. Any questions? This is very simple. So now I'm gonna give you two more examples, uh, more more complicated functions. This two simple functions. Any any question here? So again, I mean, very simple guys. How can you create a function? Just put a name, colon, put a function, and then put RTS and say, put, put uh, the code you want to put in the function here. Number two, how can you call a function? JSR, and then put the name of the function. Very simple. However, however, if you know this function is expecting numbers or arguments in, a, in, in certain register, you have to put them. Like here, I have to put a value in A, value in B, because this function is going to use A and B. And then I'm going to call it. This function is going to take whatever A, whatever B, it's going to add them, add them together, and then it's going to store the result in A. Then after I put this function, I know already the result in A. Any question, guys? Okay. In chapter four, I'm going to explain, related to this point, I'm going to explain a function, we call it keypad. 
12. Okay. This function should take a keystroke from here, from the keypad. It's going to take a keystroke. And then it's going to return it to you as a ASCII code of, the, of this keystroke. Okay. So all what you have to do, guys, simply, so you, you don't need to pass, you don't need to pass any data to these functions. All what I'm going to do, I'm going to say jump sub sum uh, jump key value. Okay. And then this function is going to take a, take a keystroke and then it's going to store the ASCII of the keystroke in register A, right? As far as I remember, hopefully I'm correct. We'll see how it is designed. I think register A. So all what I have to do, guys, just after this function, I can just use the register A. But I'm saying just to call the function, the function is going to uh, wait until the user enter uh, a, a keystroke, okay? And then it's going to take the ASCII, put it in register A. And then after you call the function, now I can check if I want to know what digit, what digit you enter, or if I want to do something, it's already in register A. Take it and use it. What I'm saying? Any question? Okay. That's what I told you about, guys, for, for any function. If I want to use, if I want to use register X, Y, A, B, for example, okay. So I'm expecting that this register before and after should be the same. That's why usually you have push here and you have pull here. Okay. So that before or after, this register have the same values. Okay. Unless, unless the return value is one of them. So for example, if, if I want to return in B, for sure I should not, I should not push B. I should not pull B. Look at what I'm saying? Because this is a return value. Okay. I don't I don't want to put the original value again. Only, only, only for this one. Okay, guys. The problem is gonna happen. For example, here you push four and you have to pull four. You push four, you have to pull four. So that RTS should find the return address at the beginning of the step. If you forget, if you forget one of them, for example, you watched here and you forget one ball, your program is gonna crash. Why? Because RTS is not gonna find the return address at the beginning of the step. Okay, any questions? I'm gonna say it for the last time. At the beginning of any subroutine, the stack is storing the return address. You can use the stack, however, make sure if you push the data you push, you have to pull this, the same amount of data before you go to RTS. So that RTS is gonna take the return address, put in BC and return it back. Simply because these machines, they don't understand, okay? RTS is gonna take whatever at the top of the stack, put it in BC, right? Even if it's wrong, it doesn't know if it's wrong or it's your mistake, right? So that's why if, if you push, if, if this is the return address, return address is here, if I push, data, but when I pull, I didn't pull everything. So this one is still in the stack. RTS is gonna take this one, put it in BC. It's gonna go to a random place in the memory, okay? New program will crash. Any questions? Great. So I have two more programs in order to better understand also what I, uh, and then this will be the end of, uh, of this chapter, okay? Um, Again, the good thing in this course, guys, I'm not going to teach an in, instruction in anymore. I already, I already finished all the instruction. Okay, what I'm going to do in, in the coming chapters, I'm going to teach how can we use uh, uh, assembly, how can you use chapter two the assembly to program input output devices. Okay, uh, same thing for C. So I'm going to start using C uh, from chapter three as well because you should know how to program it using C and using assembly. Okay. Uh, So let's now, uh, I, wanna, I, I wanna teach like something like a concept here. We call it lookup table. So what, what it means lookup table? I'm gonna tell you what is the situation. The situation is, look here guys. I wanna calculate some, a function, a certain function, like for example, sine, cosine, uh, log, whatever. I wanna calculate a certain function, okay? However, sometimes we have this situation. Sometimes it takes too much time to calculate sign. It takes, for example, I'm just giving you any function, okay? Sometimes it takes too much time to calculate it, okay? So in order to solve this problem, we create what solution, we call it like lookup table. The idea of the lookup table is, I'm gonna make a table, table means array guys, table means array, where in location zero, I'm gonna, I'm gonna store sign of zero. 
اللوكيشن 1 ام جينا ستور ذا ريزالت ساين اوف 1 اللوكيشن 2 ام جينا ستور ساين اوف 2 اند سو اون so that if you want to calculate any value you just pick up pick it up from the table so i can sacrifice i can sacrifice the storage okay to to reduce the computation so here yes i'm going to take more storage because i'm going to store the results in memory so i need more memory but computation wise is going to be much different because you are not going to calculate the sign if you want to get sign five okay you are not going to calculate it you are going to just pick up the result from the table we call it look up table okay guys same thing we can use it for many things uh like for example if you have if you need to get the ascii i think we're going to do some like here uh for example here as a the same idea we're going to do it in chapter three if i want to display you in the seven segment if i want to display a certain digit okay so every digit has a code as i'm going to explain in chapter three so i can create like something like would look look up table like this one okay so that this is the code, this is the code for zero. So if I want to display zero, if I want to display zero here on the seven segment, I'm going to go to location zero. I'm going to get the code and use it. Because I'm saying something like code up, like look up table. Okay, anyway. So now guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, how can, how can, how can you use the lookup table? In, I'm going to say it again. I just want to, you understand what, what lookup table mean. Very simple guys. It means, uh, as just a, as an example, sometimes I have a function to calculate this function. It's going to take too much time. Okay. So I can pre-compute. I can pre-compute all the values you are get, you need and store them in memory. And then all what I'm going to do, if I need sign 10, go to location 10, get it from 10. That's it. Okay. So now I'm going to choose the code. How can, how can we do it? Okay. Uh, so here, what I want to do, guys, here is I'm going to create a lookup table, as you see here, lookup table. In this, in this lookup table, I want to store the square value. Okay, for sure, the square does not meet, does not need to make a lookup table. It's pretty simple, but just just to understand why uh, how how can we use lookup tables? Okay, so look look how I'm going to make it, guys. So register x x is pointing at the first location in the table. Table means array, guys. Okay. So the way I'm going to do it is a location x plus zero, I'm going to store the square of zero, which is zero. In the location x plus one, I'm going to store the square of one, which is one. In the location x plus two, I'm going to store the square of two, which is four. x plus three, I'm going to store the, I'm going to store the square, the square of three, which is nine. At, uh, look, the last one should be here because here is, this is array of fives, array of fives. So the max, because it's array of fives, the maximum number you can have 15 because 15 square is two, two, uh, 225. A square of 16, a square of 16 is, needs more than a byte, needs more than a byte, okay? That's why if you wanna make a lookup table uh, and this table has bytes, okay? You can only store the squares numbers from zero to 15. Is that okay, guys? So, yes, yeah, so I already did the calculations. I already did the calculation and I stored the result here. I store the result here. Is it okay? So now I already have the table. I'm gonna put the table. Now I wanna use the table. I wanna use it. How can you use it? Very simple. Look here, guys. And now you may also better understand why. Remember, guys, we have something like that. E comma x. You remember e comma x, guys? E comma x. In e comma x, this one is gonna read the location pointed by x plus a. Is that okay? Okay. It's very useful here, very useful here. I'm gonna tell you how, look here. What's gonna happen guys is X, X is pointing at the first location of the array X. Is that okay? And now, now if I wanna get the square of zero, so just to put zero here in A. So now it's pointing at X plus zero. I'm gonna read whatever is there, which is the square of zero. Now, I want I want to read I want to I want to calculate the square of 10 very simple just to put 10 here in a okay this one is going to point at the location x plus 10 and in x plus 10 I am storing the square of 10 you got what I'm saying as you see here so in the location uh, x plus 0 I'm st storing here square of 0 uh, in location 3 I'm going to store the uh, square of 3 in location 15 I'm going to store the square of 15 is that okay 
So if you want to get the score of seven, seven, very simple. Look how it is very simple, guys. So number one, programming wise, how, how you are going to do it using programming, very, very simple. X has to point at the first location. This number, number two, the number you want to square, put it here in register A. That's it. And this, this combination is going to give you the location of the square. Just take it. You got something very easy. So, for example, if I need number, if I want a square of nine, just to put here nine. And because I already, in, in, and that's what, how I made it. I made it so that in, in X plus nine, I'm storing here the square of nine. Any questions? So let's see how can you put it in a function and use it. Okay, guys. Here, I'm asking, in this example, I'm asking you, write a subroutine. This subroutine is called square. Okay. This subroutine, you have to pass one value in register A, and it has to return the square of this value in register A as well. So if I want to calculate the square of nine, so I'm going to put nine in register A, call the subroutine. So subroutine is going to get the square of nine and put it in A. That's what I want to do, okay? As you see here. Also, I'm telling you, if you send, if you send the value, as, as I explained here, the maximum value you can use here, the maximum value is 15. Because more than 15, at this table, I want to create a lookup look up table for, for 15, right? What if the user sent more than 15? Error, right? Error. I want to catch this error. So if you want to catch this error, guys, what's going to happen? If you send me a value greater than 15, I'm going to return you FF in register A, where FF means error. What I'm saying? So I'm going to use FF because FF, I'm not going to use it for, for any square. So any square, so this number is not going to happen again for any, any square, okay? So I'm going to take this number, a special number FF, so once you find FF, that means there is an error. And the error should happen when, when you send the value greater than 15, okay? So I just want to catch this error. How can you use the subroutine, guys? In order to use it, very simple. Look here. I have to put some value in A. If it is correct, this value has to be 15 or less. It's correct, okay? If you put more, if you put more than 15, so I'm going to tell you this is error by, by, by retaining FF, okay? So anyway. So you have to put some value in register A, and then you have to call the subroutine. So subroutine is gonna is gonna is gonna get the square of this value from the table, and then put it in register A. Okay, and then after after you call the subroutine, after you, you after the subroutine, you have to check if register A is storing FF. That means error. There is an error. So you have to go to here somewhere to display an error message. If not, if not, so the square is the square value is stored in register A. That's it. So here, if, if you come here, so now A should equal uh, the square value. Okay, guys. So let me, again, forget forget the subroutine for now. I'm going to explain, forget it for now, so how, how it is made. Forget it. You have a black box. You have a black box. Okay? You have to send. You have to send the value in register A, and this one is going to return is going to return either square of A or is going to return FF if, 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 it, if it is error. That's it. Okay. How can you use it? That's how we can use it. Look here, guys. You have to put a value in A. You have to put a value in A. And then you have to call the subroutine. Okay. After you call the subroutine, now I'm going to check what is the value of A. If I find FF, that means it's error. If not, so I already have the square, the square value, I can use it in my program. Is that okay? Now, how can you design the subroutine? Let's look here how, how, how I'm going to make it. As you see here, guys, in the subroutine, first, I need to check, as you see here in the very beginning, guys, I'm going to compare A to 15, right? If it is more than 15, if the value you want to square is more than 15, so that means I'm going to jump to this location. It's called too big. In this location, I'm going to put FF and to A, and then I'm going to return. So the first, the first thing I'm going to do in the subroutine, I'm going to check if, if the value you want to square is greater than 15. If it's greater than 15, I'm going to put FF in register A, and then return. Any questions? Great. Now, uh, if it is not, so if you come here, if this branch is not taken, if I come here, that means A is less than or equal 15. 
that means it is okay. I can, I can score it right now. How can you score it? So exactly similar to what I explained here, guys. I hear X, X should store the beginning address, X. The number you wanna score it has to be in A. It's already in A, right? So I'm gonna say, so A comma X is gonna give you address, the location. I'm gonna read whatever is there, and then I'm gonna put it in register A or wherever you wanna put it, okay? So that's exactly what it, look here, what, how I made it. So now, if register A less than 15, I'm gonna come this way. Number one, I'm gonna initialize X to the beginning address of the array. So X is pointing at the very beginning. And then I'm gonna read, this is an address, X plus A. So I'm gonna read the byte at this location. I'm gonna store it in register A. That okay? So A now is, store, is storing the score value. Then I'm gonna jump to end here, jump to end. You got it? Very simple. Very, very simple. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna check if the value sent to me is, is bigger than 15. If it's bigger than 15, so I'm gonna come here. I put it back in A and then I'm gonna recover. So that I'm, I'm gonna tell you if you get FF, that means it's error. That's why I'm gonna check here to see if I get FF. If I get FF, that means an error, right? If not, if not, so all what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the square value of A. I'm gonna get it from where, from X plus A. But X has to point at the first location. Then X plus A is gonna get, if I made the table this way. I made the table so that in the location X plus A, I'm storing the score of A. <laughs> I made it this way, okay? So all what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, A plus X, please read a byte from this location, put it in just an A, that's it. And then I have to skip this one, then I recover. Any questions? The last, the last thing I wanna teach here guys is, you can see here I push X. Let me move this one through. You see here guys, because I'm gonna modify register X, I'm gonna modify register X, I'm gonna push X here and have I have to pull X as well. Okay, as, as I told you, so that, so that before you call the subroutine or after you call the subroutine, X will have the same value, okay? Very important, why it's very important? Because if X is storing, for example, a pointer, for example, a pointer in the main program, I don't want this subroutine to mess up, mess up with, with, the, with, the, with the main program. You got what I'm saying? So if this one is storing the pointer, so I need this value. So you will, you will have the same value. So still I can use, I can use just a X here. Okay, but still the initial value of first point, then I'm gonna get it back before I go to access. Any questions? Right. Okay, guys, any question? Let's have one more example, and this will be the end of this chapter, guys. Here, I have write a subroutine that returns FF if two strings are identical, otherwise it returns zero, zero. Okay. So now I want to make a subroutine. This subroutine, I'm going to pass two strings, two messages, message or string, two strings to the subroutine. The subroutine has to, has to check if they are identical or not. And then it has to tell me if they are identical or not. How, how is it going to tell you? It's going to tell, tell me by returning either 00, zero if, zero, zero if uh, uh, sorry, if, if, if they are identical or 00, zero if they are not identical. You got what I'm saying? Okay, how, how it's gonna return? Okay, I can use register or I can use memory location. For some reason here, I decided to use a memory location 1200, okay, for some reason. You can use a register, whatever. This is, how, this is this a design, okay? And okay, so now the question, so this is how, how it is gonna return. So the return value, which is either identical or not identical, okay? Either zero, zero or FF, okay? This value is gonna be in, 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 in this memory location. Okay, um, this is, uh, now the question is how I can pass, how I can pass two strings, two, how I can pass them. Okay, I told you all what you have to do guys, you have to put the beginning address of string one in register X. You have to put the beginning address of string two in Y. Okay, and to, don't tell me how big, how, how big is the string, just to put a delimiter here. Okay, guys, so all what I need from you 
give me the beginning address of string one and the beginning address of string two. And then I'm gonna read the string, the two strings, okay? And then uh, after that, I'm gonna check if they are identical or not. Is that okay? And there is a delimiter here at the end. Let's see, let's see how, any question? You understand it, any questions? Okay, let's see how can we do it. Oh, and so now I wanna explain guys, number one, two, two important things here guys, very important. Number one, how can you use a subroutine? If, if, if I tell you this subroutine is working this way, how can you use it? Very important. Because that's what we are gonna do in chapter three. In chapter three, I'm gonna give you many subroutines and then I'm, I program to them. I'm gonna give, uh, for sure I'm gonna explain them, but you can just, you don't need to, you don't need to write them in your program. You can just use them, you what I'm saying? So for example, if you wanna read the keypad, you don't need to write it again. I'm, I'm gonna teach you the subroutine in a, and we're gonna put it in a file and then you can include this file in your program and just use the subroutine, okay? So that's why you should you should know, given a subroutine, if I give you a subroutine, how can you use it? This, this one thing. The other thing also you should know, how can you make the subroutine by yourself, okay? So let, let's, let's think about this one. Here. Number one, I told you guys, I have a subroutine. This subroutine is called, it's called a check, a check strings, okay? Uh, also, I told you this subroutine is expecting X and Y, the beginning, beginning address of the first string in X, the beginning address of the second string in Y, and then it has to return either 00, zero or FF in the memory location 1200. Is that okay? So how, if this is the case, how I can use it? Okay, look here, this is how, we, how you can use it. Okay, this is how I call the subroutine, jump subroutine in check strings. Okay, this is how I call it, right? However, before you call it, you have, to, you have to put the data in X and Y, right? Because this one is expecting the, the two addresses. So here I created two strings, as you see here, guys, I created two strings and I put a delimiter here at the end of each, each one, okay? And then now, before, before you call the subroutine, I'm gonna put the beginning address of string one in X. I'm gonna put the beginning address of string, string two in, in Y. And then after that, I'm gonna call the subroutine, okay? Then the subroutine is gonna check, then it's gonna return zero, zero or FF. Okay, that's why after you call the subroutine, I need to check this memory location to see if it is zero, zero or FF, right? So this is the steps, guys. Number one, number one, you have to set the argument. The argument you have to base, you have to set the argument. Number two, you have to call. Number three, you have to check the return. Okay, this is how can we call? How can you use a function, right? Any questions? Okay, yeah, sure. What happens if you go beyond what? You should not, if, if it is programmed to correctly, okay, you should not go beyond it, okay? Because once I find, when's the delimiter, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna continue. Maybe your question is what happens if you forget to put the delimiter? I'm gonna design, I'm gonna design the function. Start from here, read, 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 read until you read the delimiter, okay? So what happens if you forget the delimiter? What's gonna happen is gonna go, it's gonna, it's gonna go through the memory. It's gonna keep looping in the memory until either by accident it's gonna hit the a value of delimiter somewhere in the memory, right? Uh, or or it's, it's not gonna find it and then you are gonna get error, right? So that's why you should. So what happens, what, if you don't put this one here, what's gonna happen is gonna, you are gonna continue in the memory because after after this one, there's some, something in the memory. So it's gonna continue reading it. Anyway, so now let's see how, the, how, how we are gonna program this function guys, okay? As you see here, guys, number one, okay, let me explain it here, okay. Look here, guys. Uh, what's gonna happen is that X is here, Y is here. Okay, so I'm gonna read this value. I'm gonna store it in register A. I'm gonna read this value. I'm gonna store it in register B. Is that okay? So I'm gonna read one value from here and one value from here. I'm gonna compare these two values. Now there are several cases. Number one, if they are not equal. So what it means? It means, the two, the two strings are not identical. So I found one letter 
one letter is not the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if I find if that means I have to return what is done, don't to continue, don't to continue. So if I find if I find that the value here is different from this value, don't continue, right? So just leave. And now because I already I already I already decided the two strings are not identical. Okay, this is one case. Okay, second case. What if they are equal? What if they are equal? Okay. Under equal, there are two cases. Under equal. Yeah, they are equal and both of them are zeros. They are equal, but, but both of them are not zeros. Okay. If they are equal and both of them are zero, that means the two strings are identical. Because I equal, 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 equal until I find both of them are zero. Because I'm saying, so I scanned everything, everything is equal until I hit zero for both of them. Okay. Now, what if they are equal, but they are not zero? I have to loop back, loop and repeat again. I, okay, that means, that means, for example, you have here A, you have here A, so it's the same. Okay, so you have to check next one, B and B, C and C. Okay, until you find zero and zero, yeah, now it's, it's equal and leave. Okay, that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So let me see it again before I show you the code, guys. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna read one value pointed by X here. I'm gonna read one value pointed by, by, uh, by Y here in P. And then I'm gonna compare. If they are not equal, so, okay, thus return, return, the two strings are not equal. If they are equal, there are two cases. One case, they, they are not, they are equal but zeros. That means that now you have to return because return, now the two strings are identical. Because I checked everything here, it was equal, equal, equal until I found zero. Okay, so it, now it's identical. Okay, next case, they are equal, but they are not zero. Okay, that means I didn't finish. So you have, you have to loop back again. You have to loop back again. But as we did before many times, when you loop, loop back, you have to increment X and you have to increment Y to work on the next element. I already explained this one before. You have two arrays. So X is here, Y is here. I'm going to compare. Then increment x, increment y. Compare. Increment x, increment y. Compare. Increment x, increment y. Compare. So, can I check? Okay. I'm going to show how I made it here. Yeah. So, that's exactly how I made it. Look here, guys. I'm going to read. I'm going to read the location pointed by x, put it in A. I'm going to read the location pointed by y, put it in B. Is that okay? And also increment X and Y. So as you know, this instruction actually is two instructions here. This instruction is, is doing two operations to be more accurate. So this instruction is actually two operations. I'm gonna read the byte at the location pointed by X, increment X. I'm gonna read the byte at the location pointed by Y and increment Y. Is that okay? Okay. But you increment it too, you increment it too early. Okay, that's okay. Can you increment it later? Yes, you can increment it later if you want. It's not a big deal. Okay, because I already, I already, I don't need, I'm not going to read, read again because I already read A and read B. So that's why it's okay to increment early, right? Uh, in this case. Anyway, so now I have a one, one number in A or one value in A, one value in B. Now I'm going to compare A to B. So I'm going to compare them. Okay, as I told you, when I compare, if it is not equal, so I'm going to say now already, I, I already, I made my decision. These two strings are not identical. So I have to jump. I have to jump it to here, not identical. And non identical, identical, as you see here, guys, I'm going to move zero. I'm going to put zero, zero in, in 1012 in this look. This is the return value. So, okay, this is the return value. I'm going to move zero, zero here, and then I'm going to return. I can write, I can simply, I can write here RTS to return, RTS here. So once I do this, I'm gonna hit RTS and then I'm gonna return. Okay, if it is not equal. Okay, if it is equal, so I'm gonna come here. I, as I told you, in case of equal, I have to check again. They are equal, but they are they zero or not? So I'm gonna compare again to zero. Okay, if both of them are zero, so now it's, it is equal. So I'm gonna go to a location, it's called identical. In identical, I'm gonna store FF instead of zero, zero in, uh, and 1,200, okay? If I come to here, what it means, it means they are equal, but they are not identical. 
what should I do? You have to go to the beginning again. Okay. Maybe, maybe my handwriting is not very clear, but let me, this is exactly what I explained here. So now I'm gonna compare. This is the first case. If it is not equal, so I'm gonna go to location, call to non-identical to put zero, zero, and then I'm gonna write here RTS to return, I'm done, right? If, if, if this branch is not taken, come this way, that means they are equal. In case of equal, I need to check again, they are zero or not. If they are zero, that means they are identical. So I'm gonna come here to move FF, that's it. If not, if not, if I come here, that means they are equal, but I didn't, if, that means these two, two elements are equal, but I didn't reach, I didn't reach to, I didn't reach to the delimiter yet. So you have to keep, keep doing this. Okay, so I have, I have to go to the beginning again to get, to get, get a new value and repeat again. Any questions? Here, yes, you can, you know, similar to CC language, I know similar to CC language, you can use more than RTS in your, in, in the subroutine, okay? So for example, I can say here, once you put zero, zero, just to come here, RTS, and that's it, okay? Uh, once it is FF, you come here, you, you hit RTS, and that's it, you got what I'm saying? Some student may not like it, may not understand it, maybe it's a little bit confusing, okay? If you are confusing, okay, you can just use one RTS. That's why I'm saying, that's what I'm saying here. You can just use one RTS. And then once you come here, you have to skip this one to go to RTS to return. Okay, if you are if you are confused about using more than one RTS. That's, but in C language, this is similar to C language. You can use more, more than RTS. Any questions, guys? Okay, now. So I think that's very enough for chapter two. Now we're gonna do chapter three. I promise you will love this chapter. I promise you will love it, okay? Starting from chapter three, it should be more interesting, but again, I have to teach chapter two because we're gonna use assembly here in chapter three, four, five, okay? So in chapter three, what this chapter is about, okay? This chapter is about interfacing to a microprocessor. Okay, guys, so in this chapter, I'm gonna teach, we have here a number of input output devices, like what? Like the LCD, like seven sigma, we have LEDs, we have switches, we have buzzer. This buzzer with uh, some sound, you, you see how can you generate some sound here? You have push button, push button, you have keypad here, okay? So you have, you have some input output devices. I'm gonna teach in this chapter, how can you program this input? How can you use them? How can you program them? Okay. This is what this chapter is about. So the first thing I'm going to teach here, guys, before, before I start the teaching is uh, uh, how can you program them? I want to teach something. We call it a port. A port. What port means? Okay. What, what, what port means? Okay. Um, similar. Similar to your laptop, similar to the computer, guys, if you wanna connect your mouse, you have to connect it to USB. USB is a port, okay? So any input output device is just to be connected to a port, okay? So I wanna explain what port means, okay? And then uh, how, how we can use it, okay? Look here, guys. The microcontroller has a number of ports. This is number one. So the microcontroller here has a number of ports, okay? It's similar, your laptop has more than you, one USB. You can connect the keyboard to one USB. You can connect the mouse to another USB and so on, okay? Yes, so what, what port means? Port means it's a circuit that is used to connect an input or output device to the internal system of the microcontroller, okay? Okay, and every port, every port should have, number one, external pins. This is where you have to connect the device. Number two, every port 
should have a number of registers. These registers are used to program the port, as I'm going to explain right now. Okay, so wait a second, wait a second. Make it simple. I'm going to make it simple. We have a number of input output devices, okay, like the keypad, like the MCB, like this one, like this one, okay. We have a number of input output devices. In order to connect these input output devices to the microcontroller, every one of them should be connected to a port. Because port is a circuit that's going to connect it to the internal system. Is that okay? This is number one. So every one of them should be connected to a port in order to use them. This is number one. Number two, every port should have number one, external pin, external pin here. External pin in the microcontroller. External pins in the microcontroller. This is number one. Number two, every port should have a register, a number of registers to control this port. I'm gonna, I'm gonna for sure elaborate. Okay, so let me let me give you more details now. Okay. So for example, if you look, if you this is a microcontroller in sphere card. This is our microcontroller. As you see here, guys, we have port. We have port H. Can you see port H here? This is the name of the port we have. We have port H. How many pins we have in port H? So as you see here, guys, port H. In port H, this one is port H. We have, where, where is, is, yeah, this one as well too. So port H has eight, eight pins, as you see here. So we have port H. Port H has eight pins, eight pins, starting from PH0, PH1, all the way until PH7. This is port H, as you see here, guys. So this pin here, PH0, PH1, PH2, PH3, and then four, five, six, seven. Okay? Again, this picture for, for our microcontroller, for this microcontroller. Every port has a pin, has a pins, external pins. Okay? So port H, we have eight pins on port H. The pins are here, okay? And as I'm gonna explain in this chapter, in port H, we connect the switch. Can you see switches here? The switches here. Okay, let me, because the Zoom students don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is switches. Can you see these switches here? Yeah, so these switches here are, are internally connected to board. This board, this, the dragon board, okay? It's gonna hardwire, hardwire this one, it's hardwired to port H. Is that okay? So the people who designed this port, they connected this, uh, uh, this switches to port H. Is that okay? What other port is you have? We have many ports. We have port B. In port B, we, are, we connect the LEDs here to port B. Also, we, this is the, again, hardwired. It's hardwired, okay? If you, the connections are here, okay? Also, also the seven signal are connected to board B. Okay, so if, let me go back here. Yeah, let's see what is port B here. Yeah, port B is here, guys, here and here. So for port B, we have eight pins, eight pins, okay? Starting from PB0, P means port. P zero until PB seven. So we have eight, eight bits, okay? Or eight, sorry, eight bins. And later they are gonna become eight bits. Yes, yes, that's true. They are pins, this is physically or outside the microcontroller, they are pin, pin, pins. Inside the microcontroller, they are, are, are gonna become a register. This register has eight bits, bits, as you will see right now, but anyway, okay? Also we have here guys, we have other ports. So for example, also we have here port uh, T, as you see here, we have port T, port T here. We have PT0, PT1, PT2, PT3. We have PT4, PT5, PT6, PT7. PT5, this is where I connect the buzzer, as I'm gonna explain later. So the buzzer is connected to PT5. You don't need to worry about it now. Uh, I just wanna make sure, so where is the buzzer? Yeah, this is the buzzer here. Is, um, I'm gonna teach how can you use it to make some sound. Is that okay? This, this buzzer is connected to PT5, okay? So I just wanna explain to you guys, number one, 
we have a number of pores. This is number one. Number two, each pore has external pins. External pins. Number three, any input output device you have, you have to connect it to pins. And you don't need, you don't need to do that because it's already, already hardwired here in the board. Hardwired. Okay, here. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna just all the ports we have, as you see here, guys. So I'm gonna explain them. Uh, as you see here, oh, yeah, I, I wanna tell you something. How can you tell, how can you tell if this device is input or output? Tell me a simple way to do it. I'm gonna tell you the simple way. Look here, guys. This is a microprocessor. If the microprocessor is gonna read from this device, so this device has to be input. If the data is gonna go from the microprocessor to the device, so this device is output, pretty simple. Very simple. For example, here is the LEDs. This is output because the microcontroller is going to write to the LEDs, not get a read from the LEDs, right? From the switches, this is input because microcontroller is going to read the switches. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so now we agree. We, now I want to give you, we agree on several things now. Okay. Number one. We agree, guys. Number one, we have a number of ports, okay? And port itself means a circuit. So it's gonna connect the device to the internal system of the microprocessor, is that okay? Again, this is not something new, guys. This is similar to the USB. When you connect, when you, USB is a port, this is a port, right? So when you connect your mouse, it's a, like uh, to the USB, HDMI, all of these are ports. You got what I'm saying? Anyway, so, uh, you need number one, we have a number of ports. I already explained in the picture. You can see every port, every port has pins, pins, external pins. And we have to connect or the input output device are connected to these pins. Also, and that's what I'm gonna elaborate now. Every port, every port I explained, like the ports I explained like right now, H, A, A K, and so on. Uh, we're gonna use we're, we're gonna use port A for the keypad, we're gonna use port K for here, for the LCD. Anyway, you will see. Uh, also, every port also should have a number of registers. Every port should have a number of register to control the operation, operation of, uh, of, of this port. Now I'm gonna give you details about these registers, okay? The, now we, I'm gonna explain two, two, two registers now. One register, we call it data direction register. So every port, should have a register like this one. We call it data direction register. The, every port has a data direction register. Okay. Okay. What is this what is this register is used for? Very simple. Look here, guys. When you have, if you have a port and you have a pins here, guys, for example, port P, right? This port, this port, it can be input port, input, or it can be output port. Okay, this is something you can program. It's not, it's not fixed. So the people, the people who did it, they are very smart people. So what they did, they want to give us flexibility. What do you mean by flexibility? You have ports. If you need all of them input, okay, you can program all of them input. If you need all of them output, you can program all of them output. You got what I'm saying? Flexibility. They didn't, they didn't tell us this is input, and this is output. No, they didn't do that. Okay. And, and we can program the port if it is input or output using this register. Very simple. So now, now guys, every port has data direction register. And using this register, I can program this port input or output. Usually I need to, I, this is what we call configuration. You have to do configuration, right? And usually I have to do it only one time because I'm not gonna change it. For example, port H. Port H is connected to the switches. So all the time it's input, but you have to program it one time. So at the beginning of the program, you have to do configuration. You have to program port H as input because it's gonna, I'm gonna use all the same input. I'm not gonna change it because to change it, you need to change the hardware. We don't do that. 
but you have to program the you have to program it to say this one is input okay how can you program it very simple look here guys we have a register we call it data direction register every port has a data direction register and look here guys every bit every bit in this register can program one pin one pin here if you put zero, if you put zero here in this pin, um, and sorry, in this bit, in this register, so you actually, this pin, you can program this pin input. So zero means input, one means output. So what I want to say, you don't need to make all the board input or all output. No, you can program pin by pin. Flexibility, you can program pin by pin. So I can make this pin input, this pin is output, this pin input, this pin is output, or you can make all the pins input or all the pins output, whatever you need in your in your application. You got what I'm saying? Again, how can you do it, guys? Very simple. You have a register. This register we call it data direction register, guys. Uh, before you use any port, port you have to do it. Usually, you have to do it only one time in your program at the beginning of your program. I have to do configuration. This port input is port output. This is a port you are going to use. Okay, the port is you need in your program, you have to configure them or input or output. How can you do that? Pretty simple. You have a register for every port. I have to put some value here in this register. I have to put a number here in this register. Okay. In, in this number, every bit here is gonna configure one pin. Okay. Zero means input, one means output. That means if I wanna the whole register, the whole port. If I want to program the whole, whole port input, so I'm going to put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If I want to program the whole port output, so I'm going to put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That's it, very simple, right? So you have a register. You have to put ones and zeros in this register to, to, program, the, to program the hardware so that this port should work input or output. Okay. Oh, OK. OK, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue next time. Okay? Again, for if you don't. Uh, don't worry about the test. Uh, again, uh, the way it will be, it will be. I'm not going to ask you to write a big program. It's not now, but I've, in the few, in test two, I will ask you to write a big program. In the project, you are you are going to write a big program. In the final exam, you write a big program, but not now. So uh, in the test, is going to be about chapter one, chapter two. It will be similar to the quizzes. If you uh, if you you are not going to have any problem, I, I, there there will be no tricks, no difficult question. All what I'm asking you to know, to do. And try understand what I taught in the lecture, understand the quizzes, okay? Understand, uh, uh, if you can understand them, the test should be easy, okay, guys? Yeah. But in the future, as I, this time, I'm not gonna, we still, you are still learning, you are still in the beginning. So I'm not gonna ask you to write a program, but we will do that in the future, okay?